fatala fa atu ile pa ia male me malo ola fia le ne afia fi wa fui fui fa tasi a savao es es we have gathered together from different parts of the forest which in my language in ngana samo is spoken at the beginning or in the middle of meetings in reference to hunters coming together in search of the prized royal lupe pigeon which the germans and new zealand administration got rid of um, I offer Fatma Lama prayer votives to the ancestors, elders, birds, plants, animals, lands, waters, skies of this place where we meet. Through Fatma Lama, veneration and gratitude, we reach illumination of knowledge. To Lona, to Lona, to Lona. I come from the villages of Apia, Leolumwenga, Siumu, Salilolonga, in the Samoan archipelago, and other ancestries. This is uh, an image of Namua, which is uh, a bit to the southeast of where I come from. It's in the middle of the great ocean. Um, you might know it as the Pacific, but we're not pacified. <laughs> and I also have other ancestries. I'm a grateful visitor to Kulin Nation lands, living and working near the sacred waterways Meru Yalak and Birirang Yalak, and supporting Pule Ao Ao, sovereignty of local First Nations in and around Narm, the Great Bay, and across the rancid Australians at the colony. This is that expression, just so you can see our language. Down. Okay. Typical colonial maps of the Great Ocean. Vasa lao lao in Ngana Samoa, Lul in Haku, Nata in Kuanua, or Moana Nui Akea in Olelo Hawaii are a few conceptions of the Great Ocean in our languages, encompassing vast worlds of atoll and volcanic archipelagos, multiple international diasporas. Even just before, I was showing where Samoa comes from, where Samoa is located, and usually maps from the Northern Hemisphere cut our... Samoa is divided into an independent nation state, inflected with indigenous governance, following German and British New Zealand colonial regimes, which is the two thirds to the west, where I grew up as well and the eastern third of the archipelago, which was and remains a colony of the United States. Around 260,000 people live across both sides, even though the international dateline crosses through the middle, and more than 300,000 people live in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Australia, Fiji, Hawaii, California, Washington, and Alaska. Esui fainga aitu mau faavai. I would like to offer interconnected ways of understanding indigenous arti artistic, intellectual, and curatorial work in the Great Ocean in relation to my practice in recent years. Briefly, an exhibition that I uh, worked on a few years ago, Vainu Vainu Coconut Water at Kabuljo Regional Art Gallery, uh, which engaged contested sites of movement and memory through the work of 13 Australia-based artists with close connections. Especially my closest mentors and peers from Yora Yora, Kwandamuka, Wemba Wemba, Wiradjuri, Pakana, Kulin, Maori, Samo, Tonga, Etaukeviti, Kanaka Oivi, Chamoru, Meiti, Masquim, Sopokmoch, Gunantuna, Hapu, Kanyengehaga, Oglala Lakota, Yakitichu, Tichu, Yakitichu, Nations, and many others. The reality of indigenous peoples living and striving in diaspora from our homelands and waters in the Vasa Lao Lao is due to cumulative ongoing impacts of plantation, missionary, nuclear, military, colonizations, real estate development, and detention camp industries in vastly differing periods and localities, decided and implemented by the Dutch and Indonesians, by the Spanish and Chileans, by the British and Anglo-American, Anglo-Australian, Anglo-New Zealanders, by the French and Franco-New Caledonians, by the Chinese, Russians, Japanese, and German empires and colonizing states. Samoa is divided into an independent nation state inflected with indigenous governance following German and British New Zealand colonial regimes, which is the two thirds to the west, where I grew up as well, and the eastern third of the archipelago, which was and remains a colony of the United States. Around 260,000 people live across both sides, even though the international dateline crosses through the middle. And more than 300,000 people live in Aotearoa, New Zealand, Australia, Fiji, Hawaii, California, Washington, and Alaska. I would like to offer interconnected ways of understanding indigenous art artistic, intellectual, and curatorial work in the Great Ocean in relation to my practice in recent years. Briefly, 
an exhibition that I uh, worked on a few years ago, Buy New, Why New Coconut Water at Kabulja Regional Art Gallery, uh, which engaged contested sites of movement and memory through the work of 13 Australia-based artists with close connections to the Great Ocean. And the materials of the exhibition, to my knowledge, was the first time that an exhibition in Australia was expressed in Samoan language, in Maori language, and in English, reflecting large uh, language-based communities in that area, just to the north of Mianjin, Brisbane. Just a bit of an image of what it looked like inside. And uh, Wanumi Le Fao, uh, the following year, considered bodies and kinships through sexuality, spirituality, ecology at Gertrude Con Contemporary in Inner Northern Narm, Melbourne, in the work of eight local and international artists. This in a rapidly gentrifying neighborhood, which is significant for Aboriginal rights and community controlled organizations, as well as queer and migrant organizations and spaces. Just a few images from the opening and the exhibition as well. Auntie Diane Kerr welcoming us to her country, and a sign language interpreter, Mark. Worked by Megan Cope and <laughs> Uncle Robbie Phil. Um, so the title Wanumi Le Fao is an alanga opu, an expression in the Samoan language meaning the string tied to the royal lupe pigeon in the hunt is entangled pointing to things being complicated and difficult. Uh, later I'm going to speak about a third project, Paul Liudi. A key hurdle for non-indigenous understanding of diverse indigenous practices and histories of the great ocean is a deep, ongoing lack of engagement with concepts based in our own languages, aesthetics, and knowledges. This is an installation view of The Liberators by Simon artist Angela Tietio who works across live performance, video, photography, and installation to explore contemporary culture, attending to representation, gender, ongoing colonialism, and commodifications of the body, sexuality, and place. Her wallpaper work features a chandelier suspended in a lush, tropical trop sorry, lush dark tropical forest scene above a glistening machete placed on the ground. To Tietia, this work engages them sorry, with, with ways of knowing and being in neocolonial times. The chandelier is a symbol of Western dominance, status, and colonization, with its light shining above the machete. The machete is a tool used to, fer to, sorry, to tend to fertile lands across the Vasa Lao Lao, and also symbolizes the underclass, the oppressed. In Samoa, it has been used in ceremonial practices in the past, such as when a chief in the village died. The young men in the village would run ahead of the body, being carried to a burial site, cutting anything living or inanimate to clear the way for the dead as a mark of respect. But many of us have lost the memory of this due to colonization by the light. The rendering of all our millennial existence as, meaning we've been there for thousands of years as the darkness by European missionaries in the 1800s was one of their lasting, self-repeating psychological and spiritual violences. The title, The Liberators, plays on who is liberating whom. For so long the West has used civilizing the savages and freeing the savages from sin and similar discourses to alter peoples and ecologies. But Tietia is here suggesting an ensuing threat from a rising underclass to free themselves from the grip of colonization and restore pule sa'oloto or pule aoao, sovereignty, over fanua lands, anama spirits, and mafofao, minds. This is an image to highlight memory of ceremonial practices of Samoan and many other indigenous ways of adapting to Western technology to connect to and honor our spirits and ancestors during the early days of colonization. The impending threat of those beneath the chandelier rising back to fight, sorry, rising to fight back, is what we're doing right now in our practices. To her, this is a decolonizing image. We are reclaiming our present space, our histories, and our futures. This work is part of the series produced by Tia Tia in response to Anglo-Australian artist Max Dupain's Sunbaker, where a white cis male figure lays claim to the seascape and then to all the lands and waters of the Australian settler colony in a really famous sunlit but black and white scene. As a Samoan artist living and working in unceded Eora Nation territory, Tia Tia's work is significant to my understanding of indigenous aesthetic and spiritual relationships of Ao, light or clouds, and Po, darkness or night. 
The Liberators is a grounding work within the Torah projects realized as part of my Suenga, which is Paul Liuli. Fa'alinga ma Faital Tusi, presented at West Base in Narn, Melbourne, in the middle of last year, and at the Ala Moana Center in Honolulu uh, a few months later. The project was made up of a living indigenous space, featuring work by 10 local and international indigenous artists and collectives, which was a place to gather, deepen, and engage with indigenous knowledges, gender, sexualities, and ceremonial political practices. So it, it, the setup of the exhibition changed throughout the period. So the first uh, few weeks it looked like this, and then slowly we added the works throughout the duration. Here again, Auntie Diane welcoming us to her country and smoking ceremony. Suzanne Kai, Oglala Lakota artist, uh, gave a lecture on indigenous listening practices of Turtle Island. Pati Tyrell, who's a Samoan performance artist based in Aotearoa, New Zealand, also gave a performance of Aitu. And then Lamwana and others in the collective based in Narm. Uh, produce this work. Then this is a like a variation on the exhibition when it was in Honolulu, in a former supermarket in the big open air uh, shopping center there. Watangi lefatu malaele ele. As indigenous peoples, we are inhabited, often haunted by ideas, images, and traumas of our ancestral past manifest in our genetic and spiritual memory and in our everyday realities. We are non-linear beings even within European linearity. Many of our languages in the Vasa Lao Lao place the future directionally behind and the past ahead of us. All things are at once and in each specific moment too. I see the double symbolism in Tia Tia's work as a representation of indigenous adaptability, of continuing innovation in order to thrive and survive. The machete is both a tool of colonial suppression in the German, French, American, Australian, British, Dutch, and Spanish plantation regimes of the region in the last few centuries, and a powerful sign of local contra continuity in the same way that Chinese and American culinary additions have been internalized in many indigenous cultures. The forcible alienation of the archipelagos by Europeans is countered by the ad adaptation of the same empire's tools in local indigenous responses. The languages of Europe are used across the region in ways that do not hold the same cadence or underlying cultural references as in Europe. These are specific to local Ongenu territories and Iloa knowledges. Not only are indigenous sensual languages alluded to by the images warm saturation and forest glow, but the apparent silence in the work, humans and animals being quite apparently absent, is pivotal. The silence of certain sites is a form of resistance, a quiet strength of sovereignty on colonized soil. ...sexuality in place. Her wallpaper work features a chandelier suspended in a lush tropical, tropi sorry, lush dark tropical forest scene above a glistening machete placed on the ground. To Tia Tia, this work engages the, sorry, with, with ways of knowing and being the essential tension that lies in displaying work by indigenous artists in settler colonial controlled institutions. A deep understanding of and engagement with indigenous practices and knowledges is so much more than what a Eurocentric reading can offer. Indigen uh, sorry, only Samoan culture practices and history can offer the viewer the fuller resonances of this work, signaling a return to ancestral cutting it out. Sorry, by cutting out the racist depictions of ancestors from the large billboard work. This is um, particularly in the small in the small work. The quite like the, ans the ancestors are depicted really as savages and really dehumanizing um, realism. He also cuts out the year colonizing European spirits and ancestors during the early days of colonization. The impending threat of those beneath the chandelier rising back to fight, sorry, rising to fight back, it's what we're doing right now in our practices. To her, this is a decolonizing image. We are reclaiming our present space, our histories, and our futures. This work is part of the series produced by Tia Tia in response to Anglo-Australian artist Max Dupain's Sunbaker, where a white cis male figure lays claim to the seascape and then to all the lands and waters of the Australian settler colony in a really famous sunlit but black and white scene. As a Samoan artist living and working in unceded Eora Nation territory, Tia Tia's work is significant to my understanding of indigenous aesthetic and spiritual relationships of Ao, light or clouds, and Po, darkness or night. 
The Liberators is a grounding work within the third project realized as part of my Sui Suenga, which is Po Uliuli, Fa Alinga Ma Fai Tautusi, presented at West Space in Narm, Melbourne, in the middle of last year, and at the Ala Moana Center in Honolulu uh, a few months later. The project was made up of a living indigenous space, featuring work by 10 local and international indigenous artists and collectives, which was a place to gather, deepen, and engage with indigenous knowledges, genders, sexualities, and ceremonial political practices. So it, it, the setup of the exhibition changed throughout the period. So the first uh, few weeks it looked like this, and then slowly we added the works throughout the duration. Here again, Auntie Diane welcoming us to her country and the smoking ceremony. Suzanne Kite, Oglala Lakota artist, um, gave a lecture on indigenous listening practices of Turtle Island. Pati Tyrell, who's a Samoan performance artist based in Aotearoa, New Zealand, also gave a performance of Aitu. And then Lamwana and others in a collective based in Narm. Uh, produce this work. Then this is a like a variation on the exhibition when it was in Honolulu, in a former supermarket in the big open air uh, shopping center there. Watangi lefatu male ele ele. As indigenous peoples, we are inhabited, often haunted by ideas, images, and traumas of our ancestral past manifest in our genetic and spiritual memory and in our everyday realities. We are non-linear beings even within European linearity. Many of our languages in the Vasa Lao Lao place the future directionally behind and the past ahead of us. All things are at once and in each specific moment too. I see the double symbolism in Tia Tia's work as a representation of indigenous adaptability, of continuing innovation in order to thrive and survive. The machete is both a tool of colonial suppression in the German, French, American, Australian, British, Dutch, and Spanish plantation regimes of the region in the last few centuries, and a powerful sign of local continuity in the same way that Chinese and American culinary additions have been internalized in many indigenous cultures. The forcible alienation of the archipelagos by Europeans is countered by the ad adaptation of the same empire's tools in local indigenous responses. The languages of Europe are used across the region in ways that do not sh hold the same cadence or underlying cultural references as in Europe. These are specific to local Onganu'u, territories, and Iloa, knowledges. Not only are indigenous sensual languages alluded to by the images, warm saturation, and forest glow, but the apparent silence in the work, humans and animals being quite apparently absent, is pivotal. The silence of certain sites is a form of resistance, a quiet strength of sovereignty on colonized soil. This for me is a form of Fatmalama, a deep listening and hearing of Fanua lands and Vai waters, echoed in the center of the ancestors. And yet indigenous philosophies of existence persist as ever. Va is the space between, the betweenness, not open space, not space that separates, but space that relates, that holds separate entities and things together in the unity that is all. The space of sociopolitical protection, genealogical proof, and sexual, sorry, <laughs> Well, um, spiritual imprint. <laughs> just, we, we talk about sexuality all the time, her and I, so anyway, it's 40 and slip. Um, our words for blood are toto, ele ele, and palapala. Toto can also mean to plant. Ele ele and palapala are also our terms for earth, soil, and mud. We are therefore made of earth and soil. Our blood, which keeps us alive, is earth. So when you are tattooing the blood, the self, you are reconnecting it to the earth, reaffirming that you are earth, genealogically and genetically. Tia Tia's work offers a tethered indigenous Samoan space size, free of human figures, and maintaining the source work adjacent in its gilded frame. Broderick Lord holds pride of place on entry to the biennial, wresting symbolic control of the narratives and representations of Hawaii by, by, uh, from outsiders and reestablishing local Kanaka Oivi agency. It's not a com completed action, but a process always in becoming through the interaction with new audience members who must take the journey to where Broderick wishes to send them. The immeasurable psychological, geological, and spiritual traumas and violences of Eurocentric race hierarchy, militarized invasion and annexation of the sovereign Hawaiian kingdom in 1893, emblazoned 
in the conflict within the original copy painting can never be adequately redressed. I think this is why the modern plywood architecture surrounding the work is resonant. The wall displays wood grain. The lighting is sparse but directed onto the work. Adjacent artworks give this billboard a wide berth, and the vacancy neon sign is a symbolic gesture to the audience, but on visually appealing terms. The cachet of familiarity is deliberately deployed to bring audiences over. A complication of tropical paradise narrative comes from the artists and curators alike. An invitation not to enter the hellish dreamscape maintained by your American militarist industrial complex and fantasy, but a more complex more unfinished, more real sight and sight. In recent times in the unceded Hawaiian Kingdom, the indigenous sovereignty movement has gained incredible momentum, and the mutual acceptance among diverse ethnic communities contrasts with the fearful European diaspora majority in the continental United States. The title of Roderick's work is the common English translation of Awa Mauke Ea Oka Aina e Kapono, spoken in 1843 by the Mo'i High Chief of the Unified Hawaiian Islands, Kamehameha III. A multiplicity of meanings and kauna, hidden meanings, in Olelo Hawaii are carried by this mo'olelo, or saying. Pono being a state of balance, care, and well-being of the various strata of the people and the land, from Mauka, mountaintop, to Makai, seashore, in the customary Ahupua'a districts of millennial indigenous practice over there. The emphasis by biennial curators for Yonanjo and Nahiraka Mason on island-centered thinking of connected nodes instead of Eurocentric center periphery means we imagine and actualize shared sovereignties, shared intimate relationships to our worlds. In times of aggressive settler colonial activity and capitalist military deployment around the world, Kohonululu Ho'iki Eke Hana no Ea o Naluo Makahiki focuses on local perspectives to demonstrate that decolonization, that renewing of cultural flows are indeed possible in this time and place. For the last five centuries, European, American, and Asian strategic and commercial interests and desires have played out in the Moana Nuiakea in the Great Ocean with little regard for indigenous people's agency, relationships, or perspectives. Te Aracia Te Aiwa defined the military, industri sorry, the military militarist industrial complex in multiple contexts and particularly in Hawaii as when military or paramilitary force ensures the smooth running of a tourist industry and that same tourist industry masks the military force behind it. This work is another anchor work in another large exhibition, this time a mediation multiple times over of a crucial historical event that already meets audiences versed in European knowledges and aesthetics on that turf. This is an indigenous intellectual architecture occupying Eurocentric art historical space in American militarized territory and not a fully autonomous rendering of sight. sight. The responsibility of viewers is then to meet the Sootanga relationships expressed in this work, the critique of militarized nuclear and plantation colonization in the occupied Hawaiian Kingdom, in the environment hinted at within the neon and reproduced images. It is telling of the dispossession, aesthetic, intellectual, and ceremonial political that Kanako Ivi resist and fight against, sorry, in this mediated image being the grounding work at the entrance of the biennial. The, the, uh, the neighborhoods where the biennial took place in downtown Honolulu are undergoing intense real estate development gentrification, pushing out lower income communities, including many Kanako Ivi families, and this cannot be separated from readings and approaches to the kind of sovereign indigenous art practice possible and urgent in these contexts. Significantly, Kohonolulu Ho'ikeke Hana no Ea o Naluo Makahiki represents a subversive indigenization of the, indi of the biennial exhibition format. There isn't an indigenous art biennial in the United States to my knowledge, but in fact there just was in the Honolulu Biennial in a local political context where the indigenous sovereignty movement has regained considerable place and space. It is both a buffer zone art event and a cultural exchange between Euro-American dominated art centers on the continent and the dynamic cultural practices in interconnected communities spanning the great ocean. I recognize the radical sovereign potential of large exhibitions like this, where local and global indigenous and non-European art histories and practices are centered and not marginalized within the Euro-American dominated global art world. These two anchor works are key to my developing understanding of works by indigenous artists that mediate centuries of colonial oppression and violences untold on bodies, knowledges, ecologies, and spirits, but emphasize continuity. Oleala ile pule, ole tautua. Tautua fa'alinga is a new term I've created for curating or organizing in my language, but is based on indigenous conceptions of responsible governance, organizing for the collective's well-being, and illumination. 
and displays of cultural practice that heal and strengthen mutually beneficial exchanges of atta, images, measina, fine work, faiva, creating of relationships, fatinonga, performance, and launga, uh, oratory, and more deeply of all mana or cumulative power presence in all of existence. This sotanga relationship is not a translation of curating, the curator or curatorial practice as these are understood in European languages and knowledges. Rather, the soifua maloloina well-being of our communities on and off ancestral territories of all our non-human and human relations is our duty. Fa'amalolo, healing is not dissociated to what is understood as art practice. Cultural practice takes myriad forms. Leolin, um, especially for reinscribing your languages into the presentation. That felt very powerful. Any questions, any comments? I, I respect you reinscribing your language here in Dakar, but I do sometimes wonder, back in Australia, where we are in the process of learning our languages, Aboriginal people, is there a, is there a sense that perhaps you should wait before you bring your language, reinscribe your language, until Aboriginal people can speak theirs? I guess um, something, yeah, yes, totally. Um, I am learning my language and process of colonization have meant that I don't speak it growing up. So it's not a universal, all Samoan speak Samoan language and all Aboriginal people don't speak Aboriginal languages. Um, the Wanumi Lefau exhibition, I worked with Mandy Nicholson and she was either going to write and translate a text in English and into Woiwurrung uh, or translate something I had written, and in the end, she had an artwork within it, and a section of the essay is in Waiwurrung language. And for me, it's about, like, I would never do this anywhere else, and within Australia, but it's where I live in Narm, I have relationships with a lot of the community there, and um, I'm really, like, uh, passionate about languages, all the languages, and, um, as much as I see myself as a guest as, and who's uninvited into this ter into that territory, that um, whatever I can do su to support the local indigenous languages and other cultural practices is like absolutely the minimum duty um, for being there. And that eventually I have to go home to my place. And part of this is also spending so much time going to Canada and to Hawaii and other contexts where language revival is similar to where it is in, at in Australia, completely different in different places. And then also being aware that when majority of Samoans don't live on our territory, we live in other people's lands, in your land where I grew up, in your territory, um, that the, the transmission of our language doesn't really take place. And that the vast majority of Samoan literature and artistic practice is expressed in English. And so, if we, like, and I had a different term for curating or organizing display, and I workshopped it with a few people, and now we've come up with this one. Um, but if we don't bring our language with us, and if we don't innovate, and if it's always this sacred text that we never touch because I don't know how to do the grammar properly, then it'll never come with us. And both my brothers don't speak like more than a, three, a few words. So, yeah, I don't know if that really answers. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, Leo, thank you for your presentation. Uh, my name is Bill Ismahasan. I'm from Taiwan Indigenous People. Uh, your cultural practice uh, demonstrates the movement of the body and the connected speciality of ethno speciality um, in indigenous performance and installation. I just wonder in what, uh, um, which value and expression based on your cultural. Uh, which very, very always with us and actualized through us. Malianganga fa fitai yauto umma ilinefono.